Hey everyone, welcome back. Today I'm going to be showing you how to place a photograph inside this picture frame for Canvas using the insert module in Mocha. Let's get right into it. First thing I'm going to do is upscale this video. This video is originally 700 by 1000 and as you can see it looks pretty pixelated. It's not bad but if you can better the image it'll be better for Mocha. Okay so once I upscale it to 4k and that's all I'm doing I'm just upscaling this is what it looks like. This will give me better tracking results and it'll just be easier to work. Okay, so, and what this is doing, this is actually reimagining pixels, it's creating new pixels, it's not just stretching the image, so, it's truly 4K, if you want to say so. Let's go ahead and apply the effect. I'm doing this in Premiere Pro, but you could do this on any host. Once we're inside Mocha, I'm working with the Classic workspace where you can see all these first thing we're going to do is create a spline around the frame and just leave a small gap in between you don't have to be too close or inside though just leave a small gap and once you're ready click right click and it'll close go ahead and highlight these and pull one of these corners just pull it so you can Drawing this out and let's name this layer frame and let's track the perspective as well just in case it moves a little bit and once you're ready to track make sure well you want to leave this just a small gap yeah. and once you're ready to track just track forward I'm using my loop deck live tour box and Wacom tablet so I'll be using some shortcuts from here but everything I'm doing it's here. And if you don't see some if you don't see some of these tools, you can always find them in the view mode or the tool section. Okay, once you track, go back to your first frame. Always try to work from the first frame just because it's easier. And let's go ahead now and readjust the spline close to the frame. And what I'm trying to do is cover, you see like this right here, it, it's, you, you'll see it, if you don't cover this with the spline, you'll see it when you play the video the best as possible. Let's try to get the spline close to it. Just trying to cover some of these white pixels that you're seeing. Okay, that looks okay. If we have to fix anything, we'll do that later on. See, like this right here, it's going to be very noticeable when you place the inserts. Just cover that a little. Okay, so once you do that, make sure you're always on your first frame when you're making these changes. Let's go ahead and click here and pull in so you can curve this. Now pull it back a little bit. We're just creating the round edges so it doesn't look too sharp. Right there. Get this close in a little bit. And that looks okay. Next thing I want to do is just play this just to see how it moves. We want to make sure that's inside that 
This white is inside this red line. This is actually the mask we're creating. So I'm noticing it goes out a little bit. I'm just going to pull it back. Like that. And that's much better. Okay. Same with this side. See, like this. This is going to be noticeable, these white pixels here. So let's just cover it. Let's just move it a little bit to the side. That's good. See it like this. See it. I'll just move it there a little. You see these green arrows? That's the manual keyframes you're fixing. Okay, that looks okay. Now let's go ahead and go back to our first frame. Now, let's go where it says insert. Right here where it says insert clip, go ahead and import, choose, and choose any insert you're going to place. In photo, I'm gonna pick this one. Click OK, port. You should see it in the middle of this frame. If not, then you have to adjust it. Next, you can just click on the show planar surface and adjust it, or you click here on the insert, you can always adjust it as well. Now we're gonna stretch it a little bit. So the white mat is what we're actually going to cut and we're going to be showing on the, this is the insert. So you can see this is the insert. What's this, what's outside this boundary, this red boundary here, this little triangle, that's not going to show, but this is going to be part of your feathering. So. Anything past this red line is not going to show, but you can use this to adjust the picture how you want it. Okay, just so you can see what it does. Now, I'm going to try to feather because if I bring this into the composite, to the Premiere Pro, it's going to look sharp, so I want to feather it a little bit. Go to Edge Properties, if you don't see that, go here properties. Now uh, these are your pixels. We're going to choose one. Click set. Right away you'll see the effect take place. It's better. Okay. And if you click more plus it'll feather by another pixel and so on. So you're choosing the value how much you want to feather it by. This is feathering it globally around. You see this here, it's, it looks white. That's because the insert, it's not stretched out all the way. So your insert ends right where the orange is. So in order to get this orange feathering color, you want to stretch this pixel here. When you stretch the insert, it also move the picture a little bit. If you don't want the picture to move, we 
that you can do is grid warp it, where you're only going to be moving sections of it. So, so you'll be warping it to your liking. You can choose different levels of warp if you want to see all those. Or you can just see a few, or if you want like these boxes. This is kind of like the Photoshop liquid fly tool or when you warp images. Just grab corners and sort of distort it to the shape of the canvas, you know? So you, you're not going to be moving parts of this just here. Okay, so once you do that, Feather it just by one pixel. I'm gonna go better by two and stretch the image a bit more. Check this over here. If the surface tool and the splines are getting on your way, you can always turn the splines off. That way you're not moving the mask. Same with the surface. So I like to work with the classic view. Okay, so we have this now. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna render this forward. The, the reason I I render it like this so I can see any any frames that I don't want, like such as those you can see some of those white frames. If they're not if they're visible you'll be able to see them. But with this on you sometimes you can't see that edge. Okay, let's go back to the first frame. You can go ahead and sort of see if there's anything that shows that shouldn't. See like over here, uh, you'll see like tiny little white pixels, but that's just because the video is low, uh, low resolution and it's just, just pixelated up in. But it looks okay. I'm not gonna worry too much about that. Let's go back to your first frame. Now go ahead and save it. Just so we can see what we've done, let's go back to Premiere Pro. Click over here um, on the mat, apply mat, module renders, go ahead and check the render box and click the insert cutout. Now I'll go ahead and duplicate this layer, alt, hold alt, drag up. Now I'll turn the effect for this bottom layer off for the mocha and the top one should be on. Now let's just zoom in a little bit. You can see that this is curved. Here it looks curved. Just render it to see how it looks. So as you can see everything looks in place. Okay, so you, you see that you're not seeing any white pixels or edges. You can hardly tell there's a canvas behind it, so sort of see this white, but that's because we're zoomed in. And it should it could be part of the, the clothing too. So I'm not so worried about that. Okay, so this looks good. I'm happy with this. Let's go ahead and delete this layer. Go back and turn this layer on and go and click on Mocha again. Okay, once we're back in Mocha, highlight the frame. Go to your inserts, click on the render box. Now make sure this is not highlighted and click and hold 
right here, and choose the Bezier. Okay. We're going to turn this layer off for a minute. And I'm just going to do one hand just to show you how I do it. But if you know how to do this, you can just skip. So what I'm trying to do, start somewhere around here because I just want to like feather the edge of this, not the outside, just the inside. So I'm going to start here close to where the triangles kind of start. Start somewhere around here. And I'm going to go all the way here so I can get that nice curve. So you get look like a finger type. Next thing, okay, before I do this, make sure you hold control and move this like this. And now start your spine again. What this does is sets the direction of how you want it to go, in case you don't know. Because if I start, like this is here, and if I start placing a spine right here, it's going to curve and look all weird. So what you want to do is have this straight. You can do that by holding the control, and, and then position it to where you want to continue. Go here straight. You can always drag the spine. Hold control, move this. X to pan. Go over here. And then hold it and move your mouse when you're doing this. Inward and outward just to get different types of shapes. And then you can always move this to where position it. Remember, I'm trying to get as close to these triangles. Because we're going to feather this and this is going to move. So. Right there. Hold control. Make sure you see that little black arrow, you need to move it a little, here, Now, if you're going to be adding noise or anything to these, you might want to get the exact shape of this hand. If not, just close it. And all I'm worried about is the, this. I'm not so worried about back here. Because this is all we're going to be feathering. So, once you have that, let's check and See, you want to make sure you have this from your first from the first frame. So just move it down a little bit. Let's go ahead and delete this. Share these around because it'll look weird once you get the shape of the finger. Okay, so let's go ahead and name these fingers left hand. And since we already have the frame tracks, all we're going to do is link this to the frame. So we're going to use the tracking data from the frame to link it to the hand. So the hand should move. Now it's not going to be perfect, might have to make some adjustments, but they're going to be very minimal. And go to your last frame and make these adjustments. Okay, now 
go back slowly just to make sure it's staying in place. And that looks pretty good. Okay, so we have the first. Now I'm gonna speed up the second one just so we get this. But in case you didn't know this, just a quick mind refreshing. Okay, once you make the adjustments needed, go ahead and link it to the frame. Now these two, doesn't matter which order you have them in, but the frame needs to be on the bottom, just because the hands are on top of the frame. Okay, once you do that, go ahead and turn the frame layer on. Go to insert, use all layers, check that. You should see the hands on top of this. You can see some of this white. It's okay, we'll feather that. But this one looks pretty good. So we might have to adjust the mask, the splines a little bit on this. Okay, once you have that feather, go ahead and highlight your left hand. Edge width, go ahead and pick one or two. Set it. Now the thing is, I don't want to feather this going out because you're going to start seeing part of the, the picture frame. So if you feather it out, you, you're going to see the, the frame itself. So what we want to do is minus one. Set. So it's going to feather going in. And if you need to just move this a little bit, what you can do is go ahead and click here, hold it, pick enter. Now you can move this in just a bit. This is going to move the inside, meaning the red line. Anything from the red line is going to move inward. You can't move. Okay, so inward. You can hit and render. So see how it looks. Right away you see that it removes some of that. If you wanted to move the edge, you would pick, pick edge, and you're able to move the edge outwards, like that. Yeah. And if you want to move everything together, just pick both. Or pick any if you want to move anything. You can also choose the Uber to do this. It will sort of work like that as well move in and out. Okay, once you have that, go ahead and render the whole thing. And that's how you will fix parts of this feather. You just need to move a little bit of that feather and go ahead and do that. That way you don't move everything globally if you do it this way with the edge properties. Click on your right hand. Now let's feather this by one, negative one. Click set. Make sure this is turned on so you can see it. And let's 
spider feather that again. Okay, perfect. So now we're gonna go ahead and save this. Let's go back, close this. Now, if you're gonna be adding noise to this, we'll, 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 if you need to know how to add noise, then you can stick around. If not, then this is how you would pretty much do this insert. We're gonna go ahead and duplicate this again. First of all, we're gonna change this to composite and then I'm duplicated alt hold it drag up turn the mocha effect off you want to see it zoom in a little bit and now I just render it okay so you can see it looks a bit better. If you need to feather it more, you can do that. Now, if you need to add noise, I'll show you how I do it. Because the, um, the frame is going to be a bit sharp. So you want to I just want to add noise on the, on the frame. All right, so if you want to add noise to the, to the frame, because it, it'll be sharp, you want to add just a little bit of noise, but not on the hands. Go on noise we're going to put it on this place it up so we can see the effect okay so once we apply the noise the noise it's you see there it's on the frame and in the hands but I just want it on the frame so let's go back to the mocha right hand Export shape, make sure it's on the premiere, shape data, up to clipboard. Okay. And bring it on your opacity. Paste. Now invert it. So you can see this hand has a mask. Okay. Let's duplicate the layer. This layer now delete this and go back to Mocha. Now copy the left hand shape, export shape, copy to clipboard, and exit. Top layer, opacity. Right click and paste. Okay. okay, the top one, make sure you turn the noise off. Once you turn the noise off on the top, then only this one will contain the noise. This one has the left, the, the, the right hand, and the top one has the left hand. So you can see that the hands no longer have noise. Now go to your second layer. Reduce the noise to maybe like, I don't know. I would say somewhere between three and five or six. Barrier, whatever you think. You can use color noise, which is black and white. Okay, once you have that, go ahead and render it. And if you want to change the insert to another insert, you would just need to go to the mocha. You can just go to your frame and 
you could choose a different insert. Importer. There's a different one at. You're not going to need to make any uh, new adjustments. All you have to do is just render the, the new insert. And just render it all. But this is how you would um, insert a picture into this frame using the insert module. All right, well, I hope this was helpful. If it was, let me know in the comments. Subscribe if you like this type of content. And see you guys next time.